Hey everybody and welcome. This is a bit of a different video. It's going to be a Resolve tutorial video with a real live edit going on. So you may actually find this useful if you are starting off video editing. We use Resolve. Um, I actually use the studio version, but what we show you in this is going to be standard across the free version as well. And it's really an instructional set for any editors joining us. And as I was going through it, I realized that actually it's really useful for anyone, which was brilliant. So I just continued with that vein. But also I've learned a lot from it as well because I was dissecting what I was doing as a creator. And what you're about to see, I'm sure there are different workflows and different creators approach things differently. But we often get this, oh, you're only creating a 10 minute video. How long does it take? Well, the edit of this video took 50 minutes or so. I've condensed it down a little further than that so that it's not too arduous for people to watch. But there's lots of useful information in here if you want to get into video editing as well. Hopefully, it will kickstart some people into a field that they love doing. Um, but yeah, this is a behind the scenes, warts and all. <laughs> Hope you enjoy. See you in the next one. Take care. Hey, so this this video here is all about um, editing and how I edit within Resolve. The thing that I want to show here is my particular workflow. If it can help you out as well, excellent. So I'm in the middle of editing a video at the moment. I've already done quite a few cuts, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all of what I've done so far and actually start from the beginning and show you the type of edits that I will listen for, the type of edits I will um, let slide and other things that I will want to cut out as I go through. So I'm going to drag my source file across and we're just going to work through it together. And so this will be quite a long video, but I want to explain my thought process as I'm going through and there's no better way to do it than actually look at a live video. So let's go ahead and start off. The first thing I'm going to be looking for is whether or not um, this gap at the very beginning of any video I'm doing is, uh, what's the best way of describing it? Is it too long? And we can see that we start at four seconds here and it's half a second so, or even a whole second. Um, yeah. So that's a whole second. So at this particular point in time, I do want to make sure that um, we might need to put a gap in there, a bit of extra length. But half or uh, yeah, about a second is good because it gives a chance for it to fade back up when we put the fade at the beginning. Okay, let's just listen to what happens. Now, this bit's already been filled in. Um, an intro to a video will be different depending on what I'm working on. And just like last time, what we shall do is... Okay, so the first thing I've spotted here is I've actually got a first 10 seconds, or first, sorry, first 17 seconds here. So I'm going to need to insert that. Now, instead of moving this around, I'm going to double click on the item I want to insert. And then there's a lovely button here. I think it's F9. Yeah, insert clip. That's going to put it in there for us. And then we can start working on it. So we want the first 17 seconds. Very kind of me to leave myself that. So let's just, oh. So I inserted it in the right place after all that. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, I've inserted the wrong thing in. Let's just undo what I just did. Have I got an in and out selected? Yes, so I've got a in and out selected there. Excuse me, I'm going to go Alt-I and Alt-O just to clear that down. Then when I do stuff like inserts, extra videos, it will work. I wondered why it was greyed out. I just wasn't really paying attention. That'll happen. Um, so it's definitely this beginning bit here. So let's zoom in and focus on it. And it's the first 17 seconds, so, so about there by the looks of things. That's not very accurate, isn't it? We're 21... Oh, no, we've got the four seconds at the beginning. Okay, that's spot on. So I'm going to put an in there with the I key. I'm going to just go all the way to here, press the O key, and then press delete. Not backspace, but actually delete, and it will do that ripple delete. Let's carry on. Now, I've already listened to the beginning of this, so what I often do is I press the L key once when I'm listening just back. just like last time, what we shall do is just... But I press it again to speed up. So I'll be doing things at double speed quite a bit as I'm going through. This will vary on the person that you're editing. So if someone's speaking quite slow and deliberate, then that's going to be different from someone who speaks really, really quickly. So I'm going to press L twice. And just like last time, what we should do is just hide away the FX mixer and the Vero, which you can see on 
which you can see on the song edit. Okay, so we've got an edit there to do where I've repeated myself. That happens more often than I care to admit and probably a lot in this video. So let's scroll all the way in. I'm using Alt in the scroll wheel to zoom in. Line editor zero, which you can see on, which you can see. So I'm gonna zoom in on that area. So we've got a which you can see and a which you can see. So let's go roughly in the middle there where I start taking an intake, a breath intake, and set an in and out point, press delete, and then listen back to the cut. I always find that incredibly useful. Just in case I've mismanaged the cut, it looks quite sharp here, but does it sound okay? The beat slash baseline editor zero, which you can see on the- Sounds perfect. That pause there is just a little bit long. So I'm gonna come in again. I don't want it to be super snappy, but I also don't want to miss stuff. Now notice here when I put an out point in, it's actually put it beyond the playhead. I'm pretty sure they know about this particular bug, but it's something you do need to watch out for. So I'm just gonna use the cursor keys there to move one frame, and then I can just delete that gap. Now that could be me being a bit over zealous on, on my editing, but I do try and make sure my text, or my speech actually, is flowing properly as I'm editing. Let's continue. As you can see on the song editor just here. In fact, if we didn't have that track here, you won't have those 16 boxes by default appearing on the beats and baseline editor. Now, instead of calling it the beats and baseline editor, I'm gonna to refer to it as a pattern editor, or just the pattern. And the reason for that is that you don't have to use it just for beats or the percussion of your piece of music you're creating. Or okay, so we've got another pause there. That happens quite a bit with me as I'm thinking of the right word to say. So I'm gonna go in, not zoom in too far, and then just listen back. Percussion of your piece of music you're creating. Okay, that doesn't sound natural at all. Let's listen back to how it's sounding. It's for beats or the percussion of your piece of music you're creating. Uh, I can see there if I look back, use the up arrow to skip between, down arrow, there we go. I cut it off just a little bit too soon. So in this particular case, I probably want it to come in around here, then it won't be so snappy. Let's listen to it back again of your piece of music you're creating. Okay, there is a volume difference there. There's not much I can do about that, so let's continue, unless this here actually fixes it. For the bass line, it can actually be used for quite a few things. So there's a big gap here. And is absolutely brilliant when... And is absolutely brilliant... Okay, that's me either doing something in the room, getting disturbed, or just thinking about what I want to say, which sometimes happens more often right there we go so that's tidied up i'll listen to it back i always like to listen through as i go this is the type of editor i am i don't do an overview necessarily i just go through the the work itself occasionally of course um i've seen adam my new editor he's been really uh, useful at opening my eyes up to other techniques so one thing you could do is overview the video and just put marks in then go back in so that's useful if you don't know the context so I obviously know the context of this video, I've recorded it. So I will know more when there are problems or more of those problems uh, because I've recorded it recently. So let's zoom back in. And is absolutely brilliant when you need to have a pattern that you repeat across your song and if you make an update, and if you update that pattern, it will update everywhere. So in order to rectify this, we can go. Okay, so we can zoom back in here. There's a repeat here, in and out, I and O, delete. Play it back. A pattern that you repeat across your song, and if you update that pattern, it will update everywhere. So in order to rectify this, we can go ahead and either, and in order to rectify this, we can either go ahead and press the plus, and in order to, and in order to rectify this, we can go ahead and either. Press... So you see there, I, I had a few stabs at starting that sentence, and it's it's quite easy to get a bit tongue-tied when you're recording. You're trying to think about multiple things at the same time. Let's make sure that this flows back again. Update everywhere. And in order to rectify this, we can go ahead and either press the add beta baseline editor button on the beta baseline editor, or, it, or we can press it over on the song editor as well. Now, each pattern that you create will need a new beta. So very easy there to miss, especially at double speed, that double or that was back here. So I was just taking a drink whilst that was happening. Line editor, or it, or we can. So I want to come back about here because I want to keep that flow in sentence and come and do the edit. One thing I've not been paying too much attention to at the moment is what's on screen. One thing you can ha have if it, you know, if you're doing lots of chops and edits is you can end up with a cursor flying all over the place. I've tried to, when I'm recording the video, to try and not move the cursor or at least remember where I start from. So it's only a small skip typically. Let's continue. To baseline editor, 
or we can press it over on the song editor. So that's a bit sharp there, so I'm going to bring it back ever so slightly. Try it again. Baseline editor, or we can press it over on the song. Okay, and this is me being me. I'm going to remove just a few more frames from that to make it flow. Editor, or we can press it over on the song editor as well. Now, each pattern represents one of the beats of our bar. Now, if you recall earlier on, I was talking about a time signature being how many beats. So one thing I want to review here, there haven't been any mistakes, but whenever I see a pause and I'm listening back at double time, sometimes it can be the right length at double speed. So I do want to make sure that pause that I've got here is an appropriate length. One of the beats of our bar. Now, if you recall earlier, one of the beats of our bar. Yeah, that's a bit slow there, so I'm just going to speed that up by chopping a bit of silence out and continuing. Now, I recall earlier on I was talking about a time signature being how many beats there are in a bar and what length of those colour. And this is good for judging the pacing and when you need to bring things in and out from a visual perspective. Now we've changed. That, that gap there is definitely too long, that's me thinking. But these are spaces so I can take a deep breath, think, recompose and continue. Um, very easy to edit, that's the other thing. It's better that I do that than perhaps try and mumble through literally mumble through and end up with an unclean edit. From a visual perspective, now we've changed the actual time signature, you'll see that the beat and baseline editor has also changed. Instead of having those 16 boxes, there are now 12 boxes. And again, the main beats will be on the changes of colour, you can see here. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to set that back now to 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so there's lots of pausing there. I think what I'm going to do, and this is an editing decision, um, one that you'll often take as you're going through, um, but I kind of do a sort of an incidental bit here, and I'm thinking to myself, does that add to the video? Is it important to the video? I know this can be challenging as an editor when you're editing work that you might not fully understand. However, in this particular case, I think it's it's vital that we keep the video flowing. And what we can do is help keep the video flowing by removing ums, ahs. And in this case, it's, it's more than just an um or an ah. Let's hear what I say. Is of colour, as we can see here. So as we can see here, I, I don't need that. So let's chop that entire bit out. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to set that back now to 4-4. Four, four. And we are going to be creating... So the question there is whether that and is going to be necessary. Does it add to the video again? Um, and obviously I'm not going to cut out this arm. This is a live visceral experience for you. So here we have me going and and that's that's basically an um look at the volume that it is compared to everything else let's make this track just a little bit taller for the moment uh we can see that it's vastly louder than everything else you're going to have to do a lot to make an and to sound like an and it's just not going to work so i'm going to remove it without having the audio much louder um we're well, not louder we're not adjusting the volume but much more visible really does help we are going to be so I've, I've removed a word. Does it still make sense? Set that back now to 4-4. Four, four. We are going to be creating a piece of music at the moment. Well, not really a piece of music, but a... Okay, this is a great example coming up here. I'm... I've gone off a script. I don't read from a script, but I've gone off script here, and I want to include a bit of information. That's the goal that I've got here. However... It's not really adding to anything. I mean, I'm trying to explain here that uh, we're going to be doing certain things, but it actually detracts from the video. And you can tell by how I'm talking at the time and also how, probably how I finish. I'll probably just end it abruptly. So I think this whole section here could probably be removed. I'm going to play it back at double speed to hear it, suppressing the L key twice. We are going to be creating a piece of music at the moment. Well, not really a piece of music, but a percussion track as we learn how to use this particular editor and how we can build up a rhythm, essentially. Okay, with that set back, I just want to say, okay, with the time signature set back to 4-4, four, four, one of the things about this particular section is we are not going to be thinking... Now, you notice I'm not going back and editing that straight away. I am moving forward slightly. And the reason for that is I've got a large gap, large gap. Uh, th there are several large gaps here. So I'm either thinking about what I want to say or I'm retaking. That's a good clue there if I happen to be retaking stuff. So I'm going to listen to this all. I'm going to be a good boy here and actually come back and put a marker in so I can actually come back to an appropriate place. I believe, is it press the M key twice? Okay, back here. There we go. So we've got a marker. I don't often add markers myself, um, but I will add it as good practice at the moment. Okay, let's continue and listen from here. Okay, with the time signature set back to 4-4, four, four, one of the things about this particular... 
For those with a little more musical experience, feel free to try different types of rhythm. And in general, I would encourage anybody to... Okay, so this is a different different um, thing here. It's not a retake of this. Okay, with the time... Okay, with that set... Okay, with... So let's zoom in here. Come out. And, well, we're, I think we're going to try deleting that entire section. Does the video still make sense afterwards? That's always important. We're not on the changes of colour. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to set that back now to... 4-4. Four, four. Okay, with the time signature set back to 4-4. Four, four. Okay, it works. Um, I kind of... I'm a bit repetitive, but what we can definitely do here is perhaps give myself a bit more breathing room and have a break there rather than just sliding straight into conversation. Let's try it back again. Normal speed because we want to experience it how someone would at normal Brilliant. speed. Well, I'm going to set that back now to 4-4. Four, four. Okay, with the time signature set back to 4-4, four, four, one of the things about this particular section is we are not going to be themed at all. We're going to focus on just a straightforward beat and just how to use the editor itself. That's fine by itself. Let's remove this big gap. For those with a little more and just how to... Speaking of sound, let's go ahead and add our first note. So, you can... so I'm actually wondering, again, th this is easier for me as the originator of the content. It's come from my own voice. But the question is here, is what I just said valuable? It's not instructional. It is extra information, but is it valuable? Now to 4-4. Four, four. Okay, with the time signature set to 4-4, four, four, one of the things about this particular section is we are... For those with a little more musical experience, try. speaking of sound, let's go ahead and add our first note. So, you can... so what I'm thinking about right here at the moment is we could probably chop a lot of this out and make a note back to me the uh, producer that perhaps this would be best said earlier on because i'm talking about the section but with seven uh seven lectures in so we're probably about an, uh, 40 minutes in at the moment and i'm saying about what we're going to do in the section this should probably go in the intro and it might mean that I've forgotten to put it in the intro. Or at the moment, the intro is a temporary intro and I'm still structuring the whole thing and making sure that it flows well. So that bit there, I'm going to try and remove it because I'm talking about the section as a whole and I need to make a note to myself that this is going to probably be an issue. So before we go any further, I'm going to go to Asana and create a task and assign it to myself. So I'm just going to create task. You, your, your use of Asana will look slightly different to this because you won't see all of the projects that we're on. Um, so we're going to call this LMMS Intro Explanation. And just say here, removed from Lecture 7. And then we can just type out a quick thing about what it's about. So what it's about is section is all about... Uh, standard rhythms not themed and then perhaps say add to beginning of course question mark not and add there we go perfect i'm going to create that task it's assigned to me and yeah back to editing like before speaking of sound let's go ahead so let's go ahead is something i say quite a bit let's find where i do it sound let's go ahead let's go ahead so that's going to be our out point there. Okay, we need a, a, a proper intro to it. Does it work if we just start from here? Well, I'm going to set that back now to 4-4. Four, four. And then say, let's go ahead. I think that works, you know. I might need to give myself a bit more space. Let's zoom in and make sure that cut is good. I'm going to come all the way back to here to give myself a bit of extra space. Myself. Good speaking. Let's try this again. Up to 4-4. Four, four. Let's go ahead and add our first note. So you that kind of works. Changes of colour. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to set that back now to 4-4. Four, four. Let's go ahead and add our first note. Okay, it's a bit clunky on the interface itself, and that's mainly because of this gap here. We've got the cursor skipping. Notice on this frame, the cursor is at the top here. This one, it's down slightly. This one, it's all the way over here. There's no easy way of fixing that, but having this extra cut here where we don't need it, uh, we can just remove it, but I still want that gaps, and then we can expand the video from earlier across. Four, four. Let's go ahead and add our... Let's go ahead and... I think I need a little bit more from here, and because everything's linked together at the moment, I can just push... I could just push and pull back again. Four. Let's go ahead and... 
see if I can remove where I need. And this is this is actually where a higher frame rate or sample rate can actually come in a lot of use. So let's try not there, back there. Okay. Let's use the delete key to ripple delete. Let's go ahead and add our first. Yep. Let's go ahead and it's not very well articulated. And if this was really bad, but everything else in the video was good, there's no reason why you can't ask the author, or in case me, <laughs> to come back and say, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and add our, our first notes. So you can add notes to this by clicking. So I could go and do that. In fact, I will just as part of a, you know, showing you how quickly that this can be done. So I need to say, let's go ahead and... Okay, so I had to stop the recording there to do the recording. <laughs> but that's the thing that happens. And then, of course, um, what I do on my computer is I typically find that bit that I've just recorded, uh, which is this one here. Go ahead, cut it, take it to the appropriate place, uh, wherever that happens to be. Is this linked to the right place? No, it's not. Bad me. I've, I've not removed the old location yet, so that's going to be uh, destructive. I'll do that straight after this video okay so i want to put it in with the beat and baseline editor here we go um what's what's going on uh, oh no this is the one that we're currently working that's the, the recording right now um I do apologize it's the one i stopped there we go there we go that's the recording i'm going to drag it into the bin that i'm working in i'm going to insert clip you can see it's a lot louder. I'm obviously a lot closer to the microphone at this point in time. I did just press insert rather than faffing around trying to get just the audio in. Because what we want to do is basically drag this back but keep this new audio. Ah, in which case it would have probably been better to just drag that in. Oh, there's lots, lots to do. Let's add it in. Different workflows, I know. But let's now to 4-4. Four, four. Let's go ahead and... Okay, brilliant. Let's go ahead and need toning down. So usually you can grab this little one here and kind of match it. Let's go ahead and... And the reason we want to match it is so that when it comes to um, normalizing at the end of the video, everything is relatively consistent. If you've got one clip that's really loud, it will keep everything else quiet and that's no good. Right, next pattern we or next thing we need to do here is just trim this bit up and then we need to remove the audio so let's find out where this ends let's go ahead and add our first notes so let's go ahead and add first notes so you can add off add off add our first notes okay so it's this bit here that needs trimming so at this point i'm going to use the blade tool i'm not use it yet so i'm going to press the b key and cut right there i want to keep this obviously the the video part of it but it's a lot longer i want to get rid of all of the rest of this stuff here so let's click elsewhere oh we've still got everything locked together let's unlink for a moment brilliant let's delete these now you'll notice here i have got multiple audio tracks i'm actually only using one and two but i do want to keep them separate that's really important as this is a mono track my voice and the music is going to be or the desktop audio is going to be a stereo track so they've got to be kept separate so at the end of the video i often compound my clips together you won't want to compound a stereo clip to an audio uh, a mono one sorry because otherwise it will just stop working properly so i'm going to drag that across i've lost snapping at this point in time there we go let's expand that to fill the gap that we've got and then you can click on empty space 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 and press ripple delete but i'm going to make sure that it will select everything i'm going to click on that and yep need to make sure everything's linked otherwise it won't work there we go perfect let's, let's play this go back ahead and add our first notes so there's still a tiny bit of volume difference there so i'm going to come back in once again and adjust it listen back you can also and this is probably an easy way of doing it with the audio track selected we can change the volume notice we've got multiple audio tracks selected so we need to unlink first and then have a look so we're at minus six here let's see how that sounds let's go ahead and add our first note almost there let's set it to minus eight let's go ahead and add our first notes 
clean it up a little bit more, make sure links back on. Notice at the moment I've got an in and out, but nothing else is grayed out. So I'm going to have to click elsewhere, Let's zoom out slightly. I need I need space on the timeline to click and I don't have any. There we go. Now, now we're a bit more focused and we can remove. Let's listen to that back again. Let's go ahead and add our first note. So I don't want to remove anything from the beginning, uh, just the end. So let's do that here. And it's not allowing me to. Let's try manually. Yes. So just to go over that problem that I was having there, because something else somewhere was selected, I was unable when I went in and out. As you can see here, I can't, I don't, I don't have that grayed out area. So you have to make sure that nothing is selected before you do anything. Otherwise, you'll end up deleting something on another part of the video and wondering why you've broken something which is never fun okay so this is where we get to track two and um tell a lie here i've actually had this open before this volume slider was all the way up at zero so i want it up at zero to demonstrate making sure that the audio is slightly quieter than i am in a bit so let's just continue editing now so let's go ahead and add our first note so you can add notes to this by clicking and the gray squares will turn blue this will probably sound a bit messy but let's click the play button and hear what we've written essentially Actually, that's not too bad, you know, considering I just randomly clicked. Perfect. Um, yeah. And if we listen that to that back at full speed, as in proper speed, and let's go Alt, I, and O, so I'm not going to accidentally delete anything. If we listen to this back, you'll actually hear it's far too loud in the mix. Written, essentially. That's far too loud. I'm going to bring it down by, in this case, minus 10 or so, and then play it back again. Written, essentially. That's much better. So minus 10 is three lots of minus three plus a little. So we're talking not half, but quarter volume again now. What we don't want it is it being too loud uh, for our listeners. Of course, we can change that around, but my voice needs to be prominent because there will be times when I'm playing back the music and talking. and We don't want to have this uh, volume going up and down. So we just want to keep it at a consistent level. Let's listen to this back again, see if we can make it a bit more sharp squares will turn blue this will probably sound a bit messy but let's click the play button and hear what we've written essentially okay i think let's let's press the play button and then go into it straight away click the play button click play button and just see if that works messy but let's click the play button yeah that's fine that's much sharper i'm not waffling and blue this will probably sound a bit messy, but let's click the play button. We click once to add it, click once to remove it. And we can also use the scroll wheel to change. Okay, that needs editing, definitely. I don't want that really creepy rhythm there. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on every fourth, on every fourth box and set it like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on every fourth box. Yeah, but, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on every fourth box. That's fine, let's carry on. So we click once to add it, click once. To... And the third beat of every... So this is an interesting one and it might require a, a question to the person that you're editing for. Uh, but what we've got here is a potential issue where you think this is a pause rather than a correction. Um, I will try and be better personally when it comes to um, giving directions to the editor more than anything else. But if we go back here, what, I, what I'm trying to say is the first and third. But I accidentally say first and second and then say and third. But the and third is a correction of and second. What that note is going to be. Which is really useful if you wanted perhaps the first beat and the second and the third beat. So that's good so far. I want to see whether... Um, I, th th this in its first edit form actually came out. So we're talking about what, four minutes 20? So let's do a quick review here. Let's have a look, not in videos. Where are we supposed to be? I believe it was dumped. Yeah, it was rendered out to here. So let's just have a listen back. So this is the previous render of this video. And we had a few, Hello, everybody. a few audio sync issues. So it's just after I've played my first beat so we're almost there let's see if it, it was caught the first edit marvelous music we're hearing the groovy rhythm there but so what I'm... so this is interesting already we're at five minutes in 
uh, on the first pass of this of this video. Um, but I'm 4.30 in. So obviously I've cut a chunk there. So this would have been later on. Um, what what am I saying on the lead up to it? And the third beat of every so it's this one note here. is going to be. Which is really useful if you wanted perhaps the first. Okay, let's see if we can find that. Wheel to change the velocity or how loud that note is going to be. Which is really useful if you wanted perhaps the first beat and the second and the third beat of every bar. Okay, so that edit was not picked up the first time around. So so easy to to miss these things, and really important um, after I've finished this edit, edit, and this is why editing, you know, I know what I'm going through at the moment, and I'm trying to explain things as I go, which is naturally going to slow things down, but uh, that, that put aside, editing can take a while to work out, maybe come backwards and forwards and, and try and work out was that a sentence or was it something that needs to be cut out? Um, obviously, if you're working closely with any editor, I know um, when I when I talk to Adam about this uh, later on, yeah, this is completely clueless, by the way. A Adam would have had no affordance as to whether that was a correction or whether that was me um, wanting a replacement or whether it was just me leaving a, a, a normal gap to emphasise. So this this is not an editor's uh, well it, well it is actually it's an editor's worst nightmare but it's not the editor's fault. I need to be much better when I'm recording to either do better takes. I if I make a mistake, just go back to a certain period that is concrete, or I need to leave verbal notes or some other notes in there. Beat of every bar to be slightly louder. Let's listen to how that sounds. See that gives a different feel from them all being the same volume. Now we've been playing back the pattern. Okay, let's just cut out this silence. I think I get a bit better throughout the rest of the video, so I'm going to go through quite quickly now. Now we've been playing back the pattern we've been creating, but if we go over to the song editor and press play, we won't hear anything. Let's zoom in ever so slightly. So that is a pause that's actually important. This is where context really comes in, because I'm demonstrating on screen that if you press play, whilst not having the pattern in the song editor, you're not going to hear anything back. So the pause is important because I press play. Play, we won't hear anything. Let's zoom in ever so slightly. So we're zooming in onto the kick. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in slightly. Okay, so this definitely needs a... Okay, so let's go ahead... Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in. We won't hear anything. Let's zoom in ever so slightly. Okay, so we're... Basically removing that whole section there. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in slightly. There are a couple of different ways we can work exactly how we planned. But there is another... Now you see there, this is why this track definitely needs to be quieter. And not trying to pull it down individually. Um, if we click on it individually. Uh, where are we here? Uh, we see we've not adjusted the clip's volume. But we have adjusted the track's volume. That means anything on that track is going to be quieter. Let's continue. Excellent. So that seems to be working exactly. Let's go ahead and remove that repeat. Make sure we've got the faded sides. That's caught me out more than once already. And whether we can stretch that out. And we can see little black markers indicating where the repeats will be. So if we play this one, we also find that we have 16 beats in total. And that our pattern is being repeated four times. Um, and to re-emphasize the sound thing, if this is still open, it is. Brilliant. Let's play this again. I'm going to have to make it... Oh. It's gone off the screen. Let's go and make it smaller. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. And this courage all being done. So that seems to be working exactly where the repeats will be. So if we play this one, we will also find that we have 16 beats in total. Ah, yes. So I know there was a problem with the audio track uh, when editing last time. And we can see here that's that's actually missing from here. Um, our pattern is being... And completely. So one thing to remember is if there is multi-track audio, um, I would leave the tracks there, actually, if you're unsure. That's always a good thing to do. Because once you've gone through and you've, you know, we've already made, I don't know how long we've been so far, maybe 20, 30 minutes coming up to. Uh, but we've made all of these edits here. We can't retroactively, at least I don't think we can, uh, retroactively apply any of those cuts to these other tracks if we can i'd love to know about that i couldn't i either couldn't find it or i don't have the search terminology to find the problem or the challenge that i was having 
Okay, um, yeah, back to, back to editing at this point in time. So we've replayed it, and we also find that we have... That's a complete right off there of a sentence. Let's so continue. So individually, if you control it, we can add extra instruments to our beat and baseline editor. Okay, brilliant. So we've got the beginning of that there. Let's do a quick chop in and out. Boom. Now, just to say, we've added an additional track to our song editor file format. You, you can also use a WAV or WAV. So I think there was a W in there, so not a, a wubbia, but a, a W. Do I say U twice? File format. You... You can also... Yeah, it was. Very easy to miss when you've got the video coming through at double speed. Um, yeah, cool. Let's continue. You can also use a WAV or WAV file or an MP3. It will support lots of different... Should this one support MP3? I don't know. And we can see it's a snare 02.og. Og is the file type itself. Again, you can come in. So we can see there me actually doubting myself. Um, I don't think LMMS uh, supports certain files. So I've come in and I've just auto auto corrected myself. Now that's editing afterwards. So we've got me mumbling. Um, so let's fix that. And we can see it says snare02.og. .og. You can also use a WAV, just a file format. Oh, so it's further back. Baseline editor. And we can see. Yep, yeah, just here. Perfect. And we can see it's snare02.og. Og is the use RR. Not to confuse with what we're doing at the moment. So that's a double repeat again. Very easy. Okay, I'm going to close that down, not to confuse our... Ah, 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 ah. I always take the, miss, the mick out of myself when I'm down, listening back. Not to confuse our... So there, not to confuse. Not to confuse... Okay, so that's definitely hesitant as I'm trying to do something. Let's see if we can tighten that up so the viewer's not um, waiting around for me to give instructions. A note... Do I do I repeat this later on? That's another thing. If I if I've been hesitant like this, sometimes I end up repeating on myself. On the second and the fourth beat of our bar. Now this will start. I'm going to go ahead and put a note on the on the second. Yep. So it's it's amazing when you listen back to yourself. Sometimes you're like, Mike, you're so slow. Come on. A note. Notes. Magic of editing. So there we go. On the second and the fourth beat of our bar. Now this will start. Okay, brilliant. Oh, what did I do there? Um, let's use the up arrow to go back. Yep. I just pressed the home button. Missed the delete button completely by two keys. Okay, nice. Oops, you would play. Pause the video now. Thank you. That's a go. Okay, so there's. The you can see me skipping through there. I'm looking for keywords like um, when I start off, I usually go and you know, having learned all this information, you're going to go ahead and do blah blah blah. Let's see. Okay, nice, coming along really well. And with that, I'd like you to. Yeah, I'm, I'm just fumbling my words at the moment. This this happens. Some videos come out so smoothly. Some just come out. Not a complete mess, that's the wrong word, but you, you get your tongue in a twist or you've got a bit of a dry mouth or you've just got other things going on in your life and you're, just, you're not 100% focused. Um, you eventually get there and you do it, but it's difficult. You can't just re-record an entire video. Um, not all the time anyway. Sometimes I've had to just scrap a video and come back again. Uh, but often it's just, well, we'll do another take. And you know, that's how movies are cut together essentially. Very few people will manage, you know, hours and hours of talking about any discussion without any uh, breaks in them. And when it's not a personal experience, when you're not in front of someone, it's a different format. You're expecting it to be a bit tighter, a bit more cut down. So let's go find out where we need to cut. I think it's here. Okay, and with that, I think it's time. So let's remove that and just see how this sounds. Okay, nice. Coming along really well. Okay, and with... Okay, 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 okay. Uh, it's so it's so funny when you listen back to yourself. You 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 can find either vocal ticks, or you start to say the same turn of phrase over and over again. So okay with that, or so is a is a is a good one. And so you just have to uh, grin and bear with it, cut them out if they're too prevalent, or just leave them in there. And it's just the way you speak, I suppose. Okay, with that, I think. It and I'd like you to experiment with. So it's just a, a little cut there. Yeah. Got tongue tied. And I'd like you to experiment with. Okay, so the pause the video and give that a go. We're going to have to put a slice through the video and a dipped color resolve. 
that's something we need to remember to do. Okay, everybody, welcome back. That was really quick. I'm going to make that longer. Okay, maybe a second. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Let's go ahead and everybody in a closed hi hat. Let's scroll up here. Here we go. Hi hat closed. And there was an um in there that could be removed. Um, group. You know it's a bad um when it's as loud as a normal sentence. Um, group. So I've decided to say something in a different way that's quite common. Especially if I've made a mince of my words and used... So sometimes I will use um, of instead of have. Even though they are interchangeable, I prefer saying have. Um, just a personal preference. But here we go. And go back to our pattern. Let's add in... So on. Fortunately, I started all of these with the word so. So having a vocal trope like that is absolutely fine because it enables you to find where you're going to start again. There we go. Let's listen to the edit. That's really important. See how loud it says to go along with this, unfortunately. So we can't see exactly. Okay, there's a pause here. So let's listen to the gap. Sounds like initially. Now there are. Yeah, it's too long a gap. It's amazing. When you're recording, these gaps don't feel quite as long as they are. Now, there are no doctors to go along with this, unfortunately, so we can't see exactly what velocity we've got, but let's go ahead and press play and see how it sounds. That already has a slightly different sound, so I'm going to make the effect even more extreme and just play it back again. See how that's got a more pulsing sound now? So this is a great example of looking at gaps in the audio. You can see they're all being filled, but I'm also doing something on screen, so you can't always use the audio to to work out what's going on basically so let's listen back and watch effect even more extreme and we will get more excited more as we progress through some of the later sections i want to encourage you again there was just deleting uh, superfluous words which is very easy when you're trying to explain something and ultimately you form the the final thing you actually wanted to say and it didn't need all the preamble to it and we'll have more exciting as we progress in the next lecture Okay, and then there's a note here to the editor, I think. Note to the editor, make sure... Okay, brilliant. Um, but that was me just saving it really badly. Yeah, uh, let's make this video bigger so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, and I'll see you all in the next lecture. So I can see you. The sign-off is just here. Brilliant. And I'll see you all in the next lecture. Perfect. This is the end of the video. Let's make sure that is actually marked. I'm going to delete these other audio channels as well, and then we can go back and move the video into the right place. So uh, delete the track and delete this track as well. Perfect. I'm going to save my work before I start doing s literal surgery on it. So where do I click save? So I've saved just here. So we'll grab that bit of video and... So that's appeared. We're going to cut again because I fluff up typing in and then I start again. Wow. Who would have thought saving the video? Did I just misname it or have caps lock on or something? Okay. So there and then through there. <laughs> oh, my word. Um, it don't usually need to do this level of editing, but you know what? Some, sometimes it's just what we have to do what happened there that looked like it crushed why did that crush words uh no idea delete that yeah it's removing that there it's just forcing the entire thing back wow so i'm as i say i'm a standard you i haven't said it yet i'm a standard user of resolve i don't know all the tips and tricks i know quite a few was it because i didn't have all of those that it just crushed it without well, anything else. I think this is the video section that I want. We don't need me typing. That would be ridiculous. Oh, that might have actually worked there. Let's see if this flows. Share everything together and we'll see what you guys have come up with. Brilliant. And I'll see you all in the next lecture. No, that's not quite there. I do want um, all of this. Not this last bit here. But we've got... Is it just this bit here? Save typing stuff in so we want this clip and that clip i'm going to compound it i'm going to call it saving and i'm going to just drag that clip i think back let's give myself more space about there let's drag this back everything but do keep your work so do keep your work saved let's make sure it's there then we can pull this back oh okay let's Put it over the top. Do keep your work saved so at the end you can share everything together and we'll see what you guys have come up with. Brilliant. And I'll see you all in the next lecture.
Perfect. So that is actually the end of the video. There's a couple of things that I want to do at the very end. So the first thing is highlight everything all the way back to the beginning. I've lost the video track now. There we go. Okay, that looks good to me, but I didn't want audio track too. So I'm going to have to select unlink. So link the chain icon. That's fine. Have I got a shortcut here? No. I'm going to need to find my... Oh, no, I've lost it again. Let's do it backwards. There we go. Right click. New compound clip. I never bother naming them. And then Control and T to add in fades at the Hello, beginning. Everybody. And the end. So end will go all the way to the end. Home to the beginning. I want this track to all remain the same. It's an audio track that I'm generating and listening to live. So we don't want to alter it. With, with perhaps making it a compound clip. But we do not want to normalize it or do anything along those lines. We want it to remain the volume it is. And I don't think we're going to... I mean, it's, it's almost full volume anyway. However, this one here, we need to make sure... And during my process, anyway, I want to normalize it. And I use the setting EBU R128. Now, you've got an option where you can take it all the way up to the very top. I never do that. I always leave it with this one. Then it's still normalized, yet it's not going to blow people's ears off. You've all listened to the videos where you start playing it and you have to turn it down because it's too loud. That's because they didn't use this particular setting and they just normalized it to zero dB, which is just painful for everybody to listen to. Right, finally, we save that. We go over to the delivery tab and I've got a custom setting uh, that I've set up here and we can go ahead, rend, render, and hopefully that's all we need to do. And of course, the recording at this point might fall flat, but yeah, resolves pretty quick at going through things. I forget why we left that marker there now. Back to here. I think we dealt with that anyway. So anyway, I'll leave that to remember. I hope you found this useful. I think it offers a valuable insight into what goes on behind the scenes. This type of edit, I would say, was uh, relatively involved. Uh, there's plenty of things that I've been through. Um, certainly uh, vocal gaffes whilst I'm recording. And ultimately, that's one of the biggest challenges is we're doing stuff on screen. And if there's a mistake, we we try and catch it at this stage. This is the most important thing. However, uh, th there's often the case where you guys will catch the mistake. And if it's on one of our courses, that is absolutely brilliant because you will tell us and we can go in and edit it. If it happens to be on YouTube, you know what? We can't edit it. We're sorry. Certainly, we know we're only humans. And yeah. Hopefully, uh, we just get better and better at this as we give you guys content. So I hope you have enjoyed this, uh, I don't know, look into behind the scenes at what goes on, certainly at the editing stage with Canopy Games. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.